Okay. Um, I feel like this is a big episode. I feel like we have a lot to talk about. To debate. A huge episode. The, the biggest. Government. You could say the biggest government in America just sued the biggest <laughs> company in America. Yeah, the biggest government in America did just do that. Attacked from what the calls coming from within the house, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Attacked here at home. Can you believe it? It would be like if our own geniuses turned against us. Imagine like a fucking boycott thing for Genius Bar where it's trending on mm. Twitter and it's from our own geniuses that started it. That's what this I is think, like. I feel like that's happened before. I feel like that was like a month ago. <laughs> it feels too recent. No, they're either trying to boycott <laughs> you or boycott me, but never together. True, true. true. Yeah, it's always <laughs> it's always one of us getting into trouble. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty crazy. I remember we got the little leak that the, the DOJ, the Department the of DOJ. Justice. The DOJ. It sounds so intense. It uh, does. was coming after Apple and I don't know. I... I it, how, how, well, what am I supposed to say? You know, I don't what know. What do you mean? What are you supposed to say? You don't have feels? I mean, I have feels, but the feels are very, I, I hate that I'm kind of like a both sidester for this one. Oh, God. You're one of these people. Okay. Well, <laughs> to catch everybody up, if you missed it, everybody keep track in the comments <laughs> how many times John gets angry at me. It's going to be a lot this episode. <laughs> so, the, no, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep myself cool, calm, and collected. <clears throat> Starting now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what's going on, pretty big deal. We had the EU come in with their grimy little paws and dictate that all tech companies, but mainly targeting Apple, must use a new charging standard all the way across the board, USB Type-C. And they did. That's how we have USB Type-C on the iPhone. Yeah, uh, they then, and when this happened, when this show B roll, are you show, are you giving us B roll? Yeah, thank you. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, 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 we're so close. There we what go. What case is that, sir? That wouldn't be a, um, it's not. Okay, good. It's not. Can you prove it? Yeah. Yeah. Who is that? It's a bumper case. That's I'm not a pretty cool case. case. They yeah. They didn't pay me to say it. They paid me last fall to say oh, it. Oh, so it doesn't even count now. now. Okay. So we'll wait. Okay, so when that happened, on this very show, along the lines of a similar debate, I tried to say, yes, that at small at small scale, this is this is good for consumers, right? We all love USB-C, mm -hmm. but that's how they're going to get us. I they're going to give us something that we all collectively want and use mm -hmm. that as a way to start putting their paws into more stuff, involving themselves in even more ways. And what did I call it? I call it a slippery slope. And then... And then they get their grimy little paws in again. And now we have side loading coming to, well, I guess it's in iOS 17 something, something, something. It's right? out, baby. Okay. It's, it's, you can do it right now. Side, side, load, load. side loading is happening. Okay. Welcome to the slippery slope because now that the EU demonstrated. Because now we slipping. Now we slipping. <laughs> now that the EU demonstrated even once that Apple can be manipulated from an outside force, now here at home. Not not abroad, not on the shores abroad, but instead here in the alleys of home. The United States government has yeah. attacked our boy Timothy Cook. The Department of Justice held an entire press conference where yeah. they went over their allegations towards Apple. Allegations that include <clears throat> blocking innovative super apps... Uh, they say Apple has disrupted the growth of apps with broad functionality that would make it easier for consumers to switch between competing smartphone platforms. Uh, they oh, are you playing it? Sorry, I was just do we have it? Roll in case in case you wanted to show. Okay, it. perfect. You can feel you're a genius. Talk, I love you. You're a genius. Thank you. Okay. They also say they're suppressing mobile cloud streaming services, uh, blocking the development of cloud streaming apps and services that would allow customers to enjoy high quality video games and other cloud based applications without having to pay for expensive smartphone hardware. Uh, they say they're excluding cross platform messaging apps making the quality of cross-platform platform messaging worse, uh, less innovative, less secure for users, uh, so that its customers have to keep purchasing iPhones to use something like iMessage. They say they're diminishing the functionality of non-Apple smartphones. <laughs> they're diminishing this, the functionality of non-Apple smartwatches. Wait, uh, what are you reading from, by the way? This sounds very rehearsed. I'm not used to this from you on a podcast. Oh, I, do, I just have it all, I have it all written down. 
Ooh, okay. He's yeah. Like Apple it. has limited the functionality of third-party smartwatches so that users can per- who purchase the Apple Watch face substantial out-of-pocket costs if they uh, do not keep buying iPhones. And then limiting third-party digital wallets. Apple has prevented third-party apps from offering tap-to-pay functionality, uh, stopping the creation of cross-platform third-party digital wallets. Okay. So that's basically the basis of it. Uh, they This is an anti... Uh, Django opened the door at some point while I was reading that. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, they say that Apple has implemented anti-competitive uh, badness, and so mm-hmm. now they're coming after them. And they said because of this, other smartphones are worse. So Apple okay, is let- now too good, and it's it's Apple's fault that's that everyone else sucks. Is that your video title? No, but it's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let me start here to to sort of feel like you're like a little thick mat of hair right now, and I got a comb. Okay, yeah, to get yeah, all loosen me up, baby. Out. Do you think that Apple currently engages in any anti-competitive practices? That's tough because I believe that what they are doing is right within their purview to do. Okay. But I That's can fair. see how you could classify that as anti-competitive. Like you can you can make that argument. I just don't think yeah. that argument is fair. Yeah. Um, well, here, I guess, I guess a good way to pull it up is uh, not by – I mean I guess it's in the official like 88-page complaint. But I want to find – there's the verge or somebody, somebody broke it down really well. Here we go. Here we go. This is like the five things that that U S is angry about. Right. Okay. Um, so I guess we should just go one by one and we can sort of like debate whether or not we think that these are valid or fair. Cause I mean, basically what you said is like, I, I do agree broadly. Like I, I do think that Apple did I, I guess I'll say how I feel before we dive into these and then we can get into like the specifics. Okay. I can obviously tell you feel this is crazy ridiculous. Fair? You would, you were fair. Yeah. Okay. I think parts of this are crazy and ridiculous uh, because I think Apple engaging the behaviors they behaved in, not all of them, because we're going to break it down and I, like, you'll hear so everybody who's just like, oh my God, how could he... I, I think there's nuance to this conversation, which is why I want to like go point by point because it is right. a very specific thing and complaint. And there's a lot of there's there is a decent amount on the table here that the US wants to change. Yeah, so, and I and I just want to say, like, before we dive really into this, uh it's hard to like it's hard to explain how big of an episode this is, or like how big of a topic this is. Yeah. Uh because there's a chance that this episode we'll be able to look back at as like a pivotal point in Apple history. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to scare people. It de- I guess John, it depends on what you think. But like, yeah. John, I'm scared. This has the ability to change <laughs> Apple fundamentally as a business, as a company. And you got me putting chapstick on for this one. Yeah, even though there's a lot of legal speak and it's very specific and it sounds complicated, it is very important if you care about Apple to at least pay attention to this story, I guess. Well, yeah, and I feel like I, so I, I've, I know you've done your research on this. I have right. also, as a person, been like, oh, I guess I got to, like, do this <laughs> to yeah, have a conversation yeah. about it. Uh, so, like, I've listened uh. to, uh, like, one or two podcast episodes about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, one was from The Verge cast, and then I've read, like, some reporting from The Verge, some reporting from TechCrunch, some reporting from someone else. I can't remember. But, like, I have also, just so people, like, have the context, like, I'm not just going in here being like, oh, let's react in real time. Like, I have also oh, spent yeah. thought. I made it. I made a TikTok about this, um, you did, <laughs> which we can. Well, we we've got some. We've got the Sam Cole drama corner. We'll leave that at the end of the episode because uh, you're not the only person that's had a problem with the TikTok recently. Anyway, I say all this to say, my stance is like, I like the iPhone, and that's why I bought it. And mm-hmm. I do feel like if they start changing some of these, some of these things, it is. Like it is just kind of making it an Android, which has mm-hmm. been like the open computing model, you could argue. Yeah. And I think that the open computing model across the board, ubiquitously, 
sucks. Mm. That's why I don't like PCs. That's why I think Meta is going to lose. I don't actually think people want an open computing model. I think nerds no. and people that are too deep in the sauce want an open computing model, uh, which is fair. Like, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm yeah. just saying broadly, I think like, and uh, you know, this is all just guessing, right? I don't, I'm not like, I hear, here's the data to prove this. Although I guess you could argue the iPhone winning could be anecdotal data to prove. The, yeah, that that's what I'm like saying. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I 100% agree with you that like, there are people that are really into open computing and things being, you, you've been able to tinker more. And I fully believe that you deserve to have that choice. That's why I'm so glad there are so many choices on the market. Uh, but the data also suggests, as Sam said, most people don't want that. And the data tells us that. That's yeah. that's what's interesting. It's like, why does it, why does it have to be like, okay, the points that they're making, and this is where they get you. The points that, they, that they're making, when you read those, like, five key bullet points, yeah, you're like, you okay, think? yeah, I can see how I can th – that, that tracks. That makes sense to me. The problem is the people that said this also don't have a full understanding of how this works because once you start reading further into this and actually start reading the paperwork and how they describe things, like, they're like, they're anti-competitive. okay. Yes. One of their reasons for that is like it's so hard. People stay on iPhone because it's too hard to switch from the iPhone. They literally yes. say you have to relearn. Like if you leave the iPhone, you have to. If you go to Android, you have to relearn stuff. Uh huh. Yes, that's how that. Yes, that is how that works. That's how choice works. That's the beauty of choice. Like that doesn't make any sense. To, like, are they arguing that? iOS has to be more like Android so it's not so people could easily jump between that makes no sense and I just think it's a lot of a lot of the times they're mentioning like the Apple tax and I, it's pretty hilarious that like a company that also says you that they tax the hell out of you uh is being debated in a country that also taxes the hell out of you it's fine for America to do it bad for Apple to do it if you want to live in America, you pay the taxes. If you want to yeah. live in the Apple ecosystem, <laughs> that's bad. Apple shouldn't charge you for that. They shouldn't make money from that. Yeah, I mean, I think – well, let, let's start going one by one and then we can sort of go – we can zoom out. Because people are probably like – we're okay. talking a lot about like big ideas. Let's let's just like get into like the five fundamental complaints. So the first one uh, – I don't know if they're in this order. But let's just start with like the big one, which which got my attention first, which was – Blue bubbles and green bubbles are not equitable to Android users and they suck for people. Mm -hmm. So Apple, we believe it's our time to step in. And if Apple's not going to do it, we believe we should force Apple to allow. Do uh, I have to, for full transparency, I have not read the 88 page complaint. I have not gone that far into this, but uh -huh. Do you know if it says like must adopt RCS or is there anything there? There's it's just the complaint first. So like they're not okay. really giving solutions; they're just accusing. Currently, yeah, maybe maybe I should pull up the exact eighty-eight page thing <sighs> and see if we can just like find. Because do they lay out? I think they they lay out these complaints. I read the first. Yeah, they mention it. They also mention the press conference the as well. Um. Okay. So yeah, I mean, they go through all this stuff. Let me pull this up on the screen right now. It's a very interesting document. It's a lot. I mean, just, just how they start out the complaint is like, they basically just set the framework as like Steve Jobs didn't want it to be easy to switch. That's kind of like the foundation they lay. Uh, that's an interesting angle to take. I don't, I think, yeah, I mean, I don't, I think the, I think the fact that it's n not exactly easy to switch isn't – that isn't the feature. That's a side effect of the feature. Like the fact that they – Apple. I've said this so many times. Apple has a vertical business model. Everything was designed to be this way, to work together, and that was exactly the opposite of how everything had been. That's the point of this product. And now the fact that the business model is vertical is being used against them 
and the government is saying that it was de- it's it's not designed to work well together. That's not the point. It's designed to keep you trapped. That's the argument, which is a very interesting argument because the fact that you, the fact that it's harder to switch just seems like a side effect of the feature to me, not the other way around. Okay, I found the exact spot in the complaint where like it is the U.S. government's words because I feel like you know we're reading like simplified versions from like the Verge. Not that that's inaccurate. I just I would like yeah, to hear yeah, the yeah. exact verbiage that this says. So it says number one. Messaging apps are apps that allow users to communicate with friends, family, and other contacts. Messaging apps that work equally well across all smartphones can improve competition among smartphones by allowing users to switch phones without changing the way that they communicate. Uh, Apple makes third-party messaging apps on the iPhone worse generally and relative to Apple Messages, Apple's own app, by prohibiting third parties. Okay, that's true. So like, you can't send green bubbles from another app that is an Apple's Messages app. So Apple says that their, their complaint is that Apple is knowingly and deliberately degrading quality, privacy, and security for its users and others who do not have iPhones. Apple also harms developers by artificially constraining the size of their user base. That, I don't really get that last part, but let's just, okay, they are saying... Apple's control of the messages app makes people stay on the iPhone. Do you think that's true or false? I guess let's start there. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I I think I agree. Like iMessage being the thing and blue bubbles does make people want to stay on the iPhone. But this also, <laughs> why was iMessage created? Let's start there. Because carrier messaging was a travesty. It was a disaster. For all the th- for all the things they said, they're like Apple's degrading this, all this stuff. That's Apple didn't make it worse. That it that it was that bad. That's why iMessage was created. That's the whole point yeah, of d- iMessage. Dude, my dad used to yell at me. I mean, maybe this shows my age. I just turned twenty six, but like, I I used to get in trouble. I re- sorry, I say yell at. It was like obviously a stupid little yeah. thing. I love my dad. He's a great guy, but like. I would run up the cell phone bill sometimes, yes. which I get as a parent. I'd be mad because I would make phone calls and send texts. And I think it wasn't it like back then you five got five or ten cents. Yeah, you got charged per message. Yeah, which like look, could you? That's probably for our younger audience. That's such a foreign concept. Imagine you paid five cents per iMessage, dude, o- over a certain limit. When I got my first cell phone. I was only allowed to make calls after 7 p.m. because nationwide calling was an extra if you called after 7 p.m. <laughs> and then text messages, yeah, were like 10, 14 cents per text. Yeah, you would ha- like you'd have a limit for your plan. I think my mom and I's plan was 300 texts a month. Isn't that insane? Um, that people forget <laughs> that's how Apple came into the market. That's yeah. what things were like at that time. Oh, yeah, iMessage changed the game. Yeah. Yeah, so iMessage was a response to Apple being like, wait, they didn't invent text over internet, to be clear, but they were like, no, yo, what if we Skype built this into a system and- level? Because they're like, well, wait, if, I mean, you got to give Apple props for iMessage. Like, they're, they were like, wait a second, we can build this in on all of our devices, and now you can get your messages on your Mac and your iPad and then your yeah. Apple Watch and your Air, you know, it was like no one did that. It was text messages are on cell flip phone. Mm-hmm. If you do not have cell flip phone, there is no message. Yeah. That's a pretty cool idea. So the DOJ is now like, the industry has changed. Apple's still basically acting the same way as if messaging sucks. But the thing is. Yep. I'm glad you're going to say it. (laughs) I mean, iMessage is still better than RCS. It is. But also they are implementing RCS. Like the change has already been made. It's weird for them to make this accusation after they've already announced that they're making this change. And they're acting like – they are acting like Apple themselves degraded the message quality and stuff if you're not on an iPhone. That is just how SMS and MMS works. That is how yeah. it, that is how it is. Now that RCS is more widely adopted, they are implementing that into the iPhone as well. So all of these complaints that they're making are null and void, minus the whole blue bubble, green bubble thing, because those will still be differentiated, obviously. But like the security issues and the privacy issues are much lessened by going with RCS, which is going to be part of the iPhone, uh, I guess, this year, right? 
yeah, I think they said 2024. I, I think it'll probably be like iOS 18 or something, but um, yeah. So, I mean, th- this was an interesting one. I feel like this is the biggest, probably most relatable one for most people. Some of the other ones get a bit in the weeds, but uh-huh. yeah, I, w- I I felt the same way. I was like, wait, Apple already announced RCS. And did you see the report, by the way, that Apple did RCS? Because China was like, you should add RCS. I didn't see that, but that tracks. Yeah, uh, John Gruber, our, our friend, actually hmm. did a really good uh, article on his website, Daring Fireball, about how, I can't remember the exact reason, but it was Apple did not add RCS because of, Apple added RCS because of pressure from China. And mm-hmm. I think it's because the Chinese government wanted, they like they don't want SMS or something. They want it to be over RCS for maybe, I think they own the servers or something mm-hmm. when it's over internet versus just like random tell companies. I, I, I'm, I could be misspeaking. Um, but okay. yeah, so it was like Apple made that decision for that reason. I thought that was interesting. That's the first thing. I think we both agree this is not a very strong point. Does iMessage lock people in? Yes. I would argue that it's a competitive advantage. Yeah, like this is such a simple way of thinking yeah. to me. Like what they're saying is technically true, but yeah. it's not against the law. Like this has been a feature since literally the beginning – and it just feels odd that, again, it's it's what I've been trying to say. It's like once Apple bent the knee even one time, now people are are these these government entities think that they can just manipulate how the. This is why I was trying to say like sooner rather than later, Tim Cook needs to call somebody's bluff because they're just going to keep bullying you now. Like this is uh, this okay? Changing to USB C. All right, that's one specific thing. Okay. But but that wasn't because of the EU. What was that because of? Are you going to Andrew Edwards me right now? Yes. I, I, Apple, obviously that, I, can't, I don't have the provable evidence to show you. But again, if Apple really was doing USB-C because of the government, USB-C didn't need to come legally until this year. It It doesn't, that's not what that feels like though. Like, the fact that it's just iPhone, that they didn't do all their accessories, it doesn't feel like a cohesive plan. It just feels like a panic. I I don't agree, disagree with it. It it's feels like that the way. sooner the saying. sooner they do that, the sooner they comply and don't fight, the less resistance, the less friction and animosity there is between Apple and the EU. It's like just give them. They I think they were like, let's just give them a bone, and now now we're in like that's that's whatever. That's a, a relatively small in terms of like changing apple apple's fundamental like core business. Yeah. Side loading dips a little bit heavier into that. But now this is like they want to rework this company from the inside out and that is horrifying. Uh, coming from people that don't actually understand why things are the way they are and how they actually benefit consumers. Like they're looking at all these features that benefit consumers as hurting them and hurting the industry. They even go as far as to say that the prices of smartphones are, is Apple's fault. Yeah, when, I did. Well, I saw like, that. that's insane, dude. They're saying that Apple has risen the price for smartphones for everybody, and there's no innovation in the market. That's – that. why – look at all the other companies. Like – Apple charged uh, $1,000 for the iPhone 10. That was everyone's opportunity to go, nope. This is how we're going to differentiate ourselves. We aren't going to charge that much. We're going to offer more choice at lower prices. But instead, all of these other companies just went, huh, we can do that? And now every phone is fucking ridiculously expensive. The Galaxy S24 Ultra is like a billion dollars starting (laughs) price. Yeah, my... Do I wish it was cheaper? Yes. I think think the iPhone 10 was just that pivotal moment where it's like the smartphone wasn't a thing. It was the thing. Yeah, I think people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the market responded saying we're willing to pay a thousand dollars every couple of years for these yeah. and carry carry a subsidized thing. And there's all these different things. But okay, so that's the first thing. I feel like we feel pretty relatively similar. Let's go to this next yeah. one, which is super apps. So, so, I I feel like this gets tossed around a lot, and it's not clear what this is. The idea of a super app, right, is the best example is WeChat in uh, in China or Asia, uh, where you're banking, messaging purchasing, shopping, uh, calls, everything lives inside of this one app. So Uh 
there, there, you don't use phone app for phone calls, messages for this, Facebook Messenger for that, WhatsApp. It, you use WeChat. There is That is the app that does everything you need to do on your phone, including, I believe it manages banking and like purchases and shopping. And like it is, there's no Amazon. It is WeChat. Like that's just what it is. So this document says this about super apps. They say they provide a user with broad functionality in a single app. Super apps can improve smartphone competition by providing a consistent user experience that can be ported across devices. Suppressing super apps harms all smartphone users, that, including Apple users. I'm so. This let me just finish. So let me finish. Angry. I know. Let me finish okay. by denying them access to the high quality experiences, and it harms developers by preventing them from inv- innovating and selling products. I didn't actually read that that's what they said. That's fucking whack, dog. That's insane to be like the most cluttered app you can imagine is a high quality experience. That's but, but insane. That, that goes against their argument completely. Like, okay, app that monopolizes your entire experience, fine. Yeah. iPhone splitting that experience into multiple things, bad. F- iPhone, iPhone being entire experience for everybody, that's really bad. You should be able to download app that controls all of your data all in one place. That's fine. Instead of having multiple businesses with multiple apps that do separate things, how about, yeah, you're hurting the super apps that monopolize your entire life. Yeah, that is insane to be like WeChat has monopoly and that's better than having choice and competition. Yeah, that's – this one when they – yeah, also to be clear – There's no right answer for super apps. Like in Asia, that's what the mark, that's what people have chosen. That like works really well for people there. America, like the closest thing I can think of this is like, I guess Elon's trying to turn X into a super app because it has calling and he wants it to be banking. That's not going to work here, guys. Do you know why? Because Americans are different than Asian we, countries. That like, literally we have is different- the exact opposite of what people here want to do, is put all of their eggs in one basket. <laughs> yeah. And that's just – that's a cultural choice. So yeah. for the U.S. to be like culturally super apps are better, that's – that feel – I don't know how you can prove that, <sighs> especially when there is context of different markets. Like I'm coming at this from like – I don't know much about the legal system, but I have – filed a small claim suit before and like I was doing research of like how to defend a case and it's just like Mm -hmm. this doesn't seem like a strong yeah it's like does Apple does the iPhone hurt things like super apps I don't even know if you can make that argument but even if even if the default answer is sure yeah how is that bad okay how is it so bad that you need to try to pass a law that says that's bad And I I think the key thing about super apps is this is the U.S. government saying for America, Apple needs to do this. And we don't use super apps. This this feels like they were like, we need need something else to make this case stronger. Okay. In the past, yeah, Apple has their own dedicated – basically, you cannot send SMS texts from WeChat on iOS – you have to use Apple's messages app to send a text. So I guess they would argue that that's hobbling competition because Apple forces you to use their own. But again, in America where SMS aren't really used because everyone uses iMessage on the iPhone and in America where we don't use super apps, I don't, I'm with you. I'm like, yeah, sure. Even if the answer is yes, no one in the US uses super apps. So how is that affecting our quality of life or competition? If if super apps aren't really culturally relevant in America, why are you like these need to be better? That just feels yeah like a moot point to me. It's just yeah, it's and yeah, it's goofy. Yeah, okay. So that's that. We're we got three more to go, and I I'll get to my favorite one, but I want to save that one for I think the end. Okay. Uh the watch one. I'll just preview okay. by saying that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and that is why you should get delete me. Delete me is a service. <laughs> All that yucky stuff that comes out, it'll just go right That's away. Because here's here's what happens. You see how I had to? What do they call it? In the medical field. You gotta get it out of me. I can't what tell if we're doing this. If this is the real, is they read? do it okay. for you. See all these companies that try to bog you down with mucus and other nasty things. They 
basically force the cough to happen and you don't even know what's happening. Uh-huh. Because here's how it works. There's these guys called data brokers, John. You know them. I, yeah, you, we know data brokers, the, the scum of the earth. Yeah, you know them, you hate them. They're the people that take your data and they sell it for their own personal profit. Did you know that it's your right as an American? Well, I don't know as an American. As a human to not as have your data taken? Yeah. yeah, these data so brokers are what? like little pirates and they come up and they do all the hard, dirty work. They steal all your data and then they just sell that for profit to marketing companies. That's why you get scam calls. That's why you get scam emails. That's why your stuff leaks when you don't want it to. And not just your stuff, but maybe your family stuff. Too much information online. And what are you going to do, Sam? Are you going to go to each individual pirate all by yourself and try to beat them up? No. You're going to send no. an army after them, an army called Delete Me. And right, <laughs> right now, you can go to joindeleteme.com slash Genius Bar. Use promo code Genius Bar to get 20% off. That's crazy. So not only will they do all the hard work for you, but because you're going through us, you're going to get 20% off with c- promo code Genius Bar. Check out at joindeleteme.com slash Genius Bar. That's J O I N D E L E T E M E dot com slash Genius Bar. Guys, take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. Again, that special discount at joindeleteme dot com slash Genius Bar. Thank you, Delete Me. Um, okay, okay, next up, this one is also laughable. So, just before I even read this one, I just want to tell people Apple has already changed this, and that is. <laughs> Cloud streaming game apps provide users a way to play computing intensive games in the cloud. Cloud streaming apps and cloud streaming in general can improve smartphone competition by decreasing the importance of expensive hardware for accomplishing high compute tasks on a smartphone. Suppressing cloud streaming apps harms users by denying them the by denying them the ability to play high compute games and it harms developers by preventing them from selling such games to users. Literally a month ago with the EU stuff, Apple was like, we allow cloud streaming apps now. Yeah. Before this complaint was published. Yeah. And you know that they know this and they were like, shit. <laughs> that was like a big point. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah. So like um, that, uh, do we even need to discuss this one? Yeah. I mean, they basically are like. Again, is cloud streaming something that a lot of – I feel like if you're suing – It's yeah, so specific. Like they're trying to yes. make broad changes with really specific points, and it's just their argument is not strong. Yeah, I don't see – here's a good point. I hear some iPhone users saying, yeah, texting with Android suck. That's bad for consumers. And I agree that pre-Apple announcing RCS, and we were both in agreement that it's a bad, like SMS is bad for consumers. Like it's yeah. not fun. And your stance was like, Apple should be forced to change it. I was I like- I think they should, yes. But I- th- Yes. I, yeah. Um, and I was yeah. like, eh, I'll kind of, if the government steps in and change it, I'd be cool with that. Um, but because see, that is one see where why, I can see- Do you see why back then I was like, this is the problem with the government doing it because then they can do yeah. stuff like this. Like we're, this is so, it's so fucked. I know. I hear where you're coming from. I, I'm not, I'm not trying this to This is the worst anyway, I told actually. you so, not you specifically, but this is the worst I told you so my entire fucking career. Yeah. I hate this. Um, so with cloud streaming apps, they basically want, and Apple said they're going to allow this. Like I think Xbox cloud streaming is coming to the iPhone soon. Um, so you can play Xbox games on your phone. Yeah. Now, I don't know many. Again, should Apple do this? Sure. I also don't think even anyone at Apple would be like, we're locking someone in (laughs) to our phone by not allowing them to play Xbox games. Yeah. Again, that's not a very strong. Uh, Yeah, I just, I don't know. That's just like. Windows Phone was a thing. Like, if all of these specific things were that important, if that's what really moved the market, Windows Phone would still be around. Yeah. Next up. Digital wallets. Okay. U.S. government says digital wallets are an increasingly important way that smartphones are used and are a product in which users develop a great deal of comfort and trust as they typically contain users' most sensitive info. True. True. 
Digital wallets that work across smartphone platforms allow users to move from one smartphone brand to another with decreased frictions, among other things. Apple has denied users access to digital wallets that would have provided a wide variety of enhanced features and denied digital wallet developers, often banks, the opportunity to provide advanced digital payment service to their own customers. So this is them saying the only way to use NFC payments is Apple Wallet. We Any, any bank... Any financial entity should be able to install a proprietary wallet on the phone and use the NFC chip and obtain that sensitive info, which I think inherently would decrease security. Just throwing that out there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, it's you know not a, there's no flawless system. That right? that but that's the <sighs> that is it. the feature of Apple Pay. Yeah. It's like you don't. These other merchants and retailers, they don't need to worry about every banking, whatever. They don't have to worry about all these proprietary things. Apple Pay is so widely accepted now, and everything, it doesn't matter where you bank, how you're banking, it all gets thrown through Apple Pay the exact same way. And your privacy is better protected that way. It, this is a feature. Mm. You could You can make the argument... That it should be the other way around, and I just don't. I just don't think that's the case. This it, the 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 feature of Apple Pay is exactly the complaints you're making about it, and that's just that's the interesting part. It's like they're taking all these things that are clearly features that are reasons why people are picking the iPhone, and they're picking those reasons apart as if they're bad. Yeah, because I think that this conversation almost feels like it's. Let me let me just look up a stat. Like real quick. when I use Apple Smartphone Pay, smartphone market share US. When I use Apple Pay, that merchant or retailer doesn't have my card number. It's it's hidden. It shows yeah. an an Apple Pay like generated card number. It's not uh, I also feel like just looking at this chart. <laughs> Jesus fuck. It's hard to prove a monopoly when you, Apple's still less than 90%. This feels in like obviously the percentages are going up. Like every year, especially here in the US, and we have the graph from worldwide last year. Like Apple's yes. market share is increasing. Mm -hmm. But you could simply make the argument that consumers have the choice and they're choosing the iPhone. And yeah, it really feels it like it really feels like the losers here are lobbying with their very specific demands to the U.S. government, and the U.S. government is just taking is just doing that. Like the cloud streaming, like some of this really feels like services like Spotify or Netflix are lobbying, and the U.S. government is just sure. Instead of because instead of being loyal to just one U.S. company, it just feels like people are throwing their weight around currently, and that is highly highly suspicious. Okay, let's get to the, this last point because it's fascinating. Your favorite one? This one, yeah, this one got me. It's my favorite. Point number five: smartwatches are an expensive accessory that typically must be paired to a smartphone. Smartwatches that can be paired with different smartphones allow users to retain their investment in a smartwatch when, smartwatch when switching phones, thereby decreasing the literal cost associated with switching from one smartphone to another, among other things. By suppressing key functions of third-party watches, including the ability to respond to notifications and messages to maintain consistent connections with the iPhone, Apple has denied users access to high-performing smartwatches with preferred <laughs> styling. Wait, this is just an opinion. What? Oh, sorry, I had to stop. <laughs> The Apple has denied <laughs> users access to high-performing smartwatches with preferred styling, better user interfaces and services, or better batteries, and it has harmed smartwatch developers by decreasing their ability to innovate and sell products. I mean... Goodness gracious. <sighs> but again... <sighs> okay. Let's just, let's just set a baseline, because this one I do get fired up on. How many smartwatches were being sold before 2015? Let me give you the answer, U.S. government. Not fucking many. You know why nobody's buying smartwatches? Because the Pebble and whatever 
What was the other big there one? The Samsung, Samsung Galaxy watches. Yeah. Nobody was buying them. Why? Probably because they were bad. I'm just going to go out and say good. like Apple yeah. Watch is the first smartwatch that looked good. Yeah. Okay. But you know, Apple preferred starts, stylings or whatever. <laughs> they start selling the watch. They make this Apple Watch thing on your wrist, sync with your phone. It's also, not that expensive. It was like three fifty. I feel like, yeah, that's ridiculous for them to say. So every smartwatch of, is around yeah. the same price. Yeah, like more. I don't know for for them to be like the Apple Watch is too expensive. It's like I don't know. Then don't get it. I guess I, or there's the, they have the SE. They have the SE for like one hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah, if you want a cheap that does like the same core messaging stuff. Um, and the Apple Watch succeeded because it made the smartwatch approachable. And it yeah. got it. It was like, we're just going to focus on fitness notifications. And it took Apple a while to get there. But I think the reason the watch won and the reason it's the number one selling watch in the world. Yeah, not just smart is watch. because it's better. Yeah. It's the best selling watch, period, in the world. And it's the leading driver of iPhone sales as well. Well, that's bad because they should be able to buy Android with the Apple Watch. Okay, but like to say any, to especially use the word preferred. They obviously prefer the Apple Watch, and that's why num a good number of people are then buying an iPhone is because they want the Apple Watch. So to say to to use that argument is fucking weird. But it's like yeah. they just don't understand how the tech like the that's the whole feature that it all works together. That's how things like continuity and messaging and all the notifications is how all that stuff works seamlessly because Apple designed this stuff to all work together. That's the feature. That is the point. And that is why people choose this. Yeah. So we have been, we've been glazing this episode. We've been glazing Apple. Let's be clear. I mean, that's why we pick Apple. Yeah. That's why it's an Apple podcast, not a galaxy watch podcast. Oh, goodness. <laughs> but you know, I playing devil's advocate here. Yes, the Apple Watch 100% would keep you more locked into the iPhone and Apple's ecosystem Yeah. than if, than if you could use any watch and use it with the iPhone, mm -hmm. than if I could go out and buy a Galaxy watch and use it with the iPhone. But I, I also feel like I just want to counter that by saying then just get an Android. Yeah, like, Apple can't control I, that experience, even if hypothetically they open it up and they're like, yeah, you can use a Galaxy watch. Then your poor you your poor user experience on the Samsung product. Not saying it's going to be poor, but if you have a poor experience, it's going to be associated yeah. with Apple. And then why would any company want that? Well, Samsung seems to like it quite a bit. <laughs> Samsung also makes like refrigerators, so that's fair. Yeah, it's yeah, just so the mind five, blowing. Five main things. Hopefully, I feel like that was educational. I feel like I've heard people talk about them, but. I feel like I've learned something even in this conversation. Like I didn't know that the exact language they had used was like Apple Watch too expensive. Yeah, like, well, that's I think funny. that's why that's it's funny good. to put a lawsuit. I think that's also it was a good idea for you to just pull the fucking documents up and read verbatim what they're saying. Yeah, because it's goofier than if we had to say it ourselves. Like we couldn't yeah. make it sound goofier than they made it sound. What has really gotten me is the people that have come out of the fucking woodwork, like trumpeting this thing as if it's as if this is good and uh, like okay no and we're not just talking about i'm not i don't want to say losers on twitter <laughs> i'm not just talking about the I'm people that actively hate apple day. and are using this as like a justification for their feelings yeah. i'm talking about people that should know better people like carl pay like, can we oh. pull up his insane take, dude? His oh, wild see, full, fucking take. He's full of things. I, How, I was literally going to say, I bet nothing is over the moon for this. Dude, you're going to lose your goddamn mind. Oh, no. Oh, okay, no, so Carl. go to Carl's thing. I'm trying. Hold on. Once it loads. I think maybe X is down right now because Elon Musk cut all the servers. Oh, no, we need a super app. It's going to be the super app. Remember? Yeah, bro. Imagine you I trying to pay bank for through something this too. and it's just spinning. Yeah, I want to bank uh, through that too, Carl. Kark? Is that how? There we go. Get paid. Okay. Scro I'll tell fine. you where to stop. 
Okay, historical day. The the right here. Historical day. The entire tech industry thanks Spotify and whatever for leading charge. The second tweet. His reply. iPhones sixty percent plus total market share and ninety percent market share for eighteen and below in the U.S. Coupled with their walled garden strategy is what kept us from entering the U.S. market with full force. The law. This lawsuit is the start of something very big. Fuck yourself, sir. Fuck yourself. For him to say, <laughs> for him to say that is wild. I think somebody tweeted, because we also included this in our video. Spoil, spoiler alert, we're working on a video for this. Somebody mentioned Nokia had 40% market share when Apple entered the market. Imagine Apple being like, oh, that's too many. We won't even try. Like, for them to blame Apple for their shit fucking products that they're shipping and go, oh, that's the reason we haven't entered the U.S. Not because no one here wants your fucking shit. Yeah. Make better stuff for all these fucking losers to be like, oh, Apple has too high market share. We will not try. Fuck this. Can't do it. Instead of just making stuff that people want, make compelling products that get people considering, huh, maybe I should go over there and use that. Maybe it's not because nothing the phone manufacturers, maybe it's because you guys are still using Android. It's not a nothing problem. It's not a Samsung problem. It's a platform problem. This isn't a hardware game anymore, guys. It's 2024. Software yeah. since the beginning has always been the driving factor. The hardware is just the vehicle to do so. It doesn't matter how many fucking lights you put on the back of your phone. It doesn't matter how many fucking megapixels. It doesn't matter how many times you want to install Beeper on this fucking piece of shit. It still runs Android. That's the that's the deciding factor. No yeah. one wants this. The choices are being made. If you want better products, if you want more innovation, innovate in Android. This is a Google problem. Yeah. You can decorate it all you want. It still uses Android. Make yeah, I think better the stuff. It looks cool. Don't get it me does. wrong. It does. It looks like... phenomenal. Looks great. Still runs Android. I think Max Max Weinbach, friend of the show, had a a dub on this. He was like, genuine question, how does high market share correlate to antitrust issues if there's social pressure and a good product that people are going to buy? Is that antitrust or is that consumer social pressure? Which I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and he makes good points. Like, I'm not saying that there's that Apple isn't unfair for the App Store. And I want to talk about some of this stuff in a little bit because, um, yeah, basically, Carl replies saying, high market share plus walled garden network effects plus extreme dude, economies what a of loser. scale. What? I'm sorry, Carl, but holy Low shit, Low scale dude. means you get squeezed. Wait, what is he saying? Low scale means you get squeezed by almost all your external stakeholders. I, I'm not... I'm a little confused. I This is not a complaint he post. He is complaining. This post. is a complaint post. Yeah, in fact, we're making lots of progress at nothing on all the above at a very fast speed. <laughs> yeah, I'd be more kind of dumping on him. I mean, listen, I think... Imagine if Steve was like, I had this really good idea for a phone, but then I decided I can't do it because market is too tough. The Nokia, the, some government needs to stop Nokia, and then I will introduce the iPhone. You fucking bumbling idiot. I have lost so much respect for Carl so fast the last few months. See, with the, I mean, I don't want to... I guess we, we both get a little I told you so moment. I've sort of felt that Carl is just willing to do it. I, I feel the same way about Mark Zuck right now with like mm. metaverse i know we disagree on that but i i think a lot of these people are just bumbling their way through saying whatever's hot at the time like if if uh beeper is gonna get carl likes on twitter he'll be like look we're doing beeper look everybody like yeah. instead of just like putting his head down making the best possible thing and I, I mean that's what i've said from the beginning when when nothing announced it i was like interested because i thought that the idea of this third player in the marketplace would be awesome with nothing os and then i saw the phone ran android yeah and, it's and he had the opportunity just an he, android he was like oh we make iMessage work on nothing now with nothing chat and then after you dig a little bit deeper you're like oh they're actually working with a third party company the third party company's called beeper and then it real then and then it came out that everything you send through nothing chats is saved on a server in pure text format not encrypted <laughs> not protected pure text just sitting on a server somewhere carl carl you had it. This is like you had. You have a chance to earn trust in small places like this. Nothing yeah. chats is a good idea. I don't think you should be able to like hack iMessage and make it work on your platform. But okay, you shipped that. But not only did you ship it, you shipped it 
in the worst way possible, the most broken way possible, and you still haven't ate that. Like, you haven't apologized for that. No. It just went away. Yeah. And now, this fe- people like this, remi- it, it, this, it, this would be like if all the incels of America were like, actually, oh, wow. government, can you rip the wives away from the husbands so we can have more? So we have a better chance? Instead of just, like, being a guy worth being with, you're like, actually, let's just kill the husbands. <laughs> you fucking morons. I can't stand this, dude. I, this yeah, angers me so deeply. Oh, because yeah, Okay. To be clear, and I just want to let, let people know where I'm at, because I said, let, hear me out through this entire show. Yeah. I think Apple engages in some anti-competitive practices, and I do think the App Store is one of those areas. I do think we are getting to the point where Apple needs some regulation for the app store. I believe that government regulation is very, very important and good sometimes. I know that saying that it's like, well, government bad, they can do it. I know that you have to be careful with it. I also know that without regulation, I believe the world is a worse place. Like if, because there's people that are like free market, unadulterated, just let it do whatever once market will decide. Mm-hmm. I believe that will leave a lot of people behind and be bad. That is my opinion. I, I strongly agree with you. Okay. The problem for me is that we aren't electing people that we can trust to handle this stuff and to regulate the market. Sure. Theoretically, that yeah. is a great idea. And I would, I would, I strongly agree with that and regulation okay. being a good thing. It's the people doing the regulation that don't understand. Yes. I think that this would have been a way ba- – it, it sort of feels like the U.S. felt as if they needed to, to try they, – they needed to blow their load all at once, for a lack of a better word. Mm. And they ended up just scrambling, finding like small details, that like fringe situations uh-huh. would be appealing to people. Sorry, that's, that wasn't even a proper sentence. But yeah. I I was confused. I saw this. I saw a lot of people freaking out. I guess personally, I don't feel that freaked out because I don't know how they're going to prove these things. I, I just, I don't know how in a court you're going to get a judge to look at these facts and, and, and say these things such as aren't people just choosing it? And I, I think my central problem with this argument is – I don't think the iPhone's a monopoly. It's not. I mean, you on paper, like, if you just look at the numbers, you could argue that. But you can only argue that if you take out the power of choice. But Once you even, realize people are choosing this, your argument doesn't hold the weight you think it does, I feel like. Even then, I... <laughs> I just don't I, – I don't personally think that Apple's a monopoly because you can go get something else, like you said, with choice. But also I, I think of like carriers, cell phone carriers, right? You could call that a triopoly. You have three choices. Yeah. But even that's not a monopoly. All of those companies are owned by different things, and there is <laughs> a little bit of competition, although I still don't think that there's enough in allowing some of those mergers like T-Mobile and Sprint is very questionable. That's yeah. a story for another day, government. Yeah. Point yeah. Being, that, no, but that's fine. That's <laughs> yeah. totally point, okay. The fact that we only have being, three choices in America for carriers, that's fine. You can get whatever phone you want in America. I mean, I think even though, like, technically w- Huawei was banned, I don't think it's – is it illegal to import a Huawei? No, you or can it import like, them. It's illegal it. for them to sell it, yeah. So so that's what I'm saying. Like, it is I, – I believe the U.S. is acting as if Apple is the only phone you can buy and they're doing all these terrible things. And I really think Apple's argument of you can just buy an Android to get – all of this and more when they only have 60% peak market share. I mean, I really think to, to prove that this is a monopoly, you got to be way higher than 60 or 70. Yeah. And you got to come Personally, with, you got to come with much better data. Like yeah, they just, are just saying things from like a preferred perspective. And that doesn't make any sense. It just feels like a bunch of old people were sitting around some, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but this is suspiciously feeling, suspiciously feeling like lobbying to me. 
And it just, the way they're writing this down is just like old people translating what people on the other side of this had tried to explain to them why this is bad. And then the old people are like, yeah, it is bad because uh, worse messaging experience without actually understanding why it's a worse messaging experience. Or yeah, or the context of how iMessage came to be. Like just that little story we told earlier about Yeah, how. like they're acting like you send an SMS to an Android phone and Apple's fucking taking that text themselves, shoving it through a garbage disposal and just like making your life worse when that's just how the carrier works. Yeah. I mean <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to play devil's advocate. It's hard. It's hard, but it's hard because they didn't they had the burden of proof, and I don't – and obviously they haven't put everything in here, but the burden of like tease, I guess you could call it, and I just don't feel like there's enough here. I, I don't – the, yeah, no. only, the only point that I think they may get somewhere on is the messaging. But that's and been that's, sorted. Yeah, and, and Apple's – they've Cloud streaming. <laughs> added sorted. RCS. Yeah. So yeah, they've added encryption to the iPhone. They're, sorry, they haven't yet, but – they're going to do it. That's not like Apple's not a company that announces things except for air power and then yeah. backs out. It, the it's like in being, all of these ways that they are complaining, Apple has made the market as a whole better because of it. Here's what I don't get. Why did they not focus on the app store here? I think that would have been a way stronger spot because I do think- Because that's being changed too. Well, not in America mm. yet. Like I do think that the The percentage only way hasn't been changed? Didn't we cover that already? The percentage changed. Well, it's been 15% up to, I think, a million dollars revenue for a couple of years now. But mm. I, I do think for payment processing, there should be more choice than only Apple getting their cut for a product. I, I do think I, – I believe Apple is restricting – app competition on the iPhone by controlling the app store. I do not think Apple is reducing smartphone competition on the iPhone. I yeah. think proving that is going to be damn near impossible. I think that was a stupid thing to focus on. Well, that's and the I thing. Think like this is their proof. Like this, yes. this was, this is the lawsuit. This is what they came up with. <laughs> this is what is going to court. This is what the public is seeing. This is like, this is what they're launching this lawsuit with. And it just doesn't, it feels insane. Something that we didn't talk about that I think we would get criticized for not mentioning is okay. a lot of this lawsuit, as I scroll through, sorry, I'm not, I'm on the wrong page. Let me pull it up. Um, a big part of what this lawsuit does as well is they draw comparisons to Microsoft in the 90s. Okay. Um, I'm yeah, they did that in the press they, conference as well. Where they do that. Um, Can you control F, command F? Yeah, sorry, it's a good call. Okay, yeah, here we go. It's like, this is where introduction. So they're basically saying, and I wasn't really around in the late 1990s, just being straight up. <laughs> However, long story short, Microsoft basically wanted full control of the PC market. And they were, uh, Bill Gates has really, <laughs> Bill, the, the PR campaign that the Gates Foundation has run is should be studied. <sighs> because Bill Gates from went from being like, the most malicious robber baron of the 90s to where he literally wanted and believed in his heart that nothing else should exist other than Windows and PCs to being like, global warming's bad, guys. I'm going to help the kids in Africa. Yeah. Like, this is the same guy who tried to kill every computer but his own. He got pied in the face and was hated by so many people because of his actions. That is a case where I think Microsoft did dominate. Let me look at what what is Microsoft's Microsoft peak market dominance. Like where were they at in the nineties? Because I know it had to be. Microsoft is it, fucking it had huge be. even currently, dude. Like yes, like yeah, a few weeks like ago, they passed company. Apple. They I think they've come back down, but they literally passed Apple just a few weeks ago. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to find, dude. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Read this sentence. In 1997, in 19 Microsoft had a staggering 90% market share. <laughs> Fucking hell. That's a monopoly. 60 that Apple is 30% less than this, and the U.S. is claiming that they have a smartphone monopoly is neurotic. And also, Microsoft, like... 
they really led the charge here. Whereas I think it feels like throughout time, all of these smartphone manufacturers have had the same opportunity at growth. Whereas Microsoft was was ahead already, especially in enterprise, and they manipulated that. This, I feel like freedom of choice was was there all along and now we're we're starting to see the momentum of that over a decade of people buying smartphones yeah that now, well more than a decade oh my god 20 years of people buying smartphones almost and it's like this is the result of that and because some people don't like the results of that they think the rules of the game should be changed see that's a good point right because the parallels that they're drawing from Microsoft and something that's interesting, right, is that you could very easily make the argument that because of this regulation against Microsoft, that is how Apple came to be. Mm-hmm. Because Microsoft's market share was regulated, they were seen as a literal monopoly in the market, Apple was able to be born. The thing is... I do think there's a very big difference between what Microsoft was doing, which is like trying to kill everyone and that is their thing. Apple is doing some of that, but I feel like the scales at which they were doing it are completely different. Like you can argue iMessage is anti-competitive. I don't think you can argue that it's, extinguishing anything else because another kind can make something better. I just, I just feel like the, the parallels they're drawing, I see how they got there, but I completely disagree. Yeah. It just feels outcome. like a game of telephone. Like they are, what they're yeah. saying is technically true. It just sounds like someone told them that and they were regurgitating it without yeah. a, an actual understanding. Like, like I keep saying, these are all features. These are reasons why the iPhone is successful, not reasons why others aren't. Yeah. And Apple definitely has engaged in behaviors to keep their momentum and advantage of, of like not allowing default third-party browsers, not allowing other people to use the Messages app. At the same time, on the smartphone, which is – this is about iPhones. This is an iPhone monopoly is what, I, is what the suit is claiming. We're not talking about any of Apple's other products. That model, I think, won because it was better for people. Mm-hmm. And I think if people wanted all of these things like cloud streaming, no, let me rephrase this. If people want all these things, you can get it. Yeah. You can spend $1,600 and get an incredible hardware from Samsung Yeah, with your 103,000 times zoom or whatever you get. Um, and those get are to cool see the moon, features. Sam. Like I... I mean, I know we're is we're kind of preaching to the choir here now. Like we've been doing that a lot of this show. But my my point being, I don't think anyone would be talking about Androids if they weren't relevant. And a lot of people, four D ish percent at the of the market, mm-hmm. like four in ten people are still talking about Androids. Yeah, people are buying Androids still. Like Samsung I, I, is selling millions of phones fair. a year. It's uh, okay, what I'm going to say might sound wild. Okay, let me listen. But I feel like the numbers track. Like, I very strongly believe that we should always have these choices. I really, I'm really, i very grateful myself that Android exists. It's not like yeah. I want iOS to take over and there'd be no Android anymore. I personally, from a personal user experience perspective, obviously prefer iOS and Mac, the Apple ecosystem. And I'm grateful that I have that choice. And I'm grateful that somebody else, you listening maybe, you have the choice to be watching this on your Android device. I think the numbers track, though. I think the numbers tell us that most people don't want that open Android experience. They prefer the controlled experience from people that they want it tailored for them. They don't want to have to think this much. And I think that the numbers completely make sense with how many people want the open platform, they want Android, and how many people want yeah. iOS. Mm. And I think that the majority of people, if given a fair choice, do prefer iOS. And other yeah. markets where people, maybe it's not as uh, lucrative, uh, maybe where there's 
the the accessibility of of having an iPhone isn't there. Maybe where people are spending on average not a thousand dollars for a smartphone, but maybe they can squeeze by four hundred. The market reflects that, where mo- more people are choosing Android. Android is very popular in India, for example. Um, it's gaining market in China. In China, it's huge. Yeah. yeah, and uh, that's the beauty of uh, of the freedom of choice. But in a market where people are are especially here in the U.S. is a very good metric where people are spe- are willing to spend a thousand dollars on a smartphone. They have the choice of a thousand dollar iPhone or a thousand dollar Android phone. They are in fact choosing the thousand dollar, sometimes more for the iPhone Pro Max. Like that ship, they ship a lot of those. And mm-hmm. I think that, like, I don't, I don't think this should be an argument. I think the data tells us that more people prefer the iPhone right now. That could change in the future. That can always change. But right now, it always it changes every year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, people like, prefer the iPhone. And if you're <coughs> mad about that, I mean, that's weird. Like, if Android was and that's the crazy part is like way more android phones sell but the fact that apple by by individual unit carries this much they ship four iphones a year sometimes five if you include the se that's insane that's crazy that they are able to counter the market share with just those four or five options whereas android is shipping out hundreds of phones a year from who knows, yeah, Sam, you know, Samsung has like 15 different models, including two in the top 10 best. Dude, I'm not kidding. No I think they launched, of. I think they launched four or 40 or 50 a year market wide, like worldwide. It's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, I think that like, I mean, you, you could be mad if you want, but I think acknowledging that people right now prefer the tailored ex- yeah. experience of an iPhone isn't enough of a reason to say the iPhone is bad. Yeah, I mean, I just I to wrap on that. I guess I just I feel like two two of their five points are provably false because Apple's already changed things. One of the other three is okay, strong, and the other two are pretty weak. So the it's smart like smartwatch thing is is wild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if why if you're gonna make that, I'm just saying, if you're willing to put this in a legal document, why didn't you also include AirPods and all the other accessories that work with iPhone and have advantages to working on an iPhone better? Like AirPods, spatial audio, and so many features don't work if you're not using them with an iPhone. Actually, now that you say it, I feel like what is Apple's smartwatch market share? I mean, do we even want to know? <laughs> Apple Watch market share US. Let's see. Sam, it is almost April. Man, time flies when you're doing a podcast. I know. And if you are still hanging on to the to the remnants of the new year, you need to let it go. Drop it off. We've moved on. It's almost April. The hype has now worn off. It's time to settle into your normal routine. <laughs> your normal routine, whatever that is for Sam. I don't know. But I know it involves <laughs> shipping stuff. And that's why today's episode is sponsored by Stamps.com. We love Stamps.com. Postage rates just increased again. Did you know that, Sam? I did as someone that ships things frequently. I'm pissed. Isn't that ridiculous? But you know what also increased? What? The discount you get by using stamps.com instead of going anywhere else. You can't find rates like this anywhere else. The best rates. The most beautiful rates you've ever seen. I've never seen rates bigger than this. Like up to 89% off of USPS and UPS rates. Plus, stamps.com automatically tells you the cheapest and fasting shipping options so you don't have to navigate through all those different carriers. And also, did I did I forget to mention... No lines? No going to the post office? No. It's crazy, man, because here's the thing. Stamps.com is indispensable for our business. We've been using them for years. And guys, you can keep your mailing and shipping moving at the speed of your business with Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code Genius for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and the free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code Genius. To this day, no one gives away that many free stuff. No, they're the number one free stuff sponsor for sure. Thank you, Stamps.com. We love you. you That's a four-week free trial, free postage, and a free digital scale when you go to Stamps.com slash genius. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Oh, this is just showing global. But, yeah, I mean, Apple is the biggest single company by a lot, but they're still not even close in, like, the biggest, I don't know. It (sighs) Apple lead to U.S. watch market. Um... Oh, here we go. Oh, my fuck. Yeah, I know. Let me just scroll, guys. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, even Apple Watch is, it's not even 50% in the US. The iPhone hmm. is 20, not even, tw- it's, yeah, I just don't know. I just do not, I, I, there's just no way that they, pr- I'm, I'm placing my bets now, there's just no way that they prove unless Apple gets, t- unless the iPhone hits 80 plus percent and Apple is being more anti-competitive than they are currently. I don't know how they prove this. I just genuinely don't think that there's a way that they win. They might get a a couple small dubs on small points, but there's no way that they have enough info to to show the iPhone is a monopoly. Isn't Android the same? Like the argument of like, when you switch, you have to spend money to switch. Okay. What happens if you switch from Samsung to iPhone? Are you spending more money to go to switch? Yeah. Yeah, but you you be the, you be doing the same thing. You go from Samsung to Google. Yeah, the U.S. is saying that you should basically be able to use, I guess, the Apple Watch with any smartphone, and then any smartwatch with the iPhone. Yeah, but then that would just make the experience worse. I was gonna say, do they know that software isn't the same? Like, do they know? Yeah, do, they, do they know that Android watches suck? Like, have they ever used one? I don't know. It's just it. I, I just this I feels cannot, like an opinion, though. No. This feels like a lot of this is just them That's being like- That's all any of this like, is, dude. That's all USB-C is. That's all sideloading is. It's all opinion. Here's, it is here's all what opinion. I'm trying to, it feels what I'm trying like to lobbying to me. Remember when you were making fun of me uh, three weeks ago when I said, I think Apple Vision Pro is ridiculous for $34.99 for what you're getting considering uh-huh. it costs Apple only, what, uh, $1,900 to make. And you made fun of me and everybody was dunking on me, right? Yeah. That was fun. Here's the thing. That's my opinion. Yeah. And you're, you can disagree. I could not imagine suing Apple and be like, I think Vision Pro for what you get is ridiculous. Could you, like, could you imagine if I wrote that in a lawsuit? Yeah. Be like, it's much easier to switch between the meta suite of products than the mm. Apple Vision Pro because it's so, like, that's insane. Yeah. You just don't buy it. You could get something else there. There's Android. There are there are like phone. actual issues in the U.S. and this is what we're doing. Yes, that was what I ended my. Do you want to talk about my TikTok? You said it made you angry. Oh, I just not that TikTok specifically, but you started oh, that geez. TikTok. You started that TikTok by saying your iPhone is about to be an Android or something, and I just want to. Yeah. Sometimes I want to choke you. Okay, let me let me play that just so everybody can get, get the vibe. <laughs> Here we go. Say goodbye to your iPhone because it's about to become an Android. Yeah, the U.S. government just sued Apple because they think the iPhone is an. What are your thoughts on that? I think I. It took me about an hour and a half to make this TikTok. I I rewrote that hook a bunch. I mean, like, I yeah, I get what you're saying and doing. Yeah, but you know, you're not you're not the only person that's had a problem with. Oh no, I have something queued up currently as we speak. I have my finger on a key currently. Okay. Oh. (laughs) Oh. Yeah. Uh. Okay. I I didn't know that you were going to bring this person up on the podcast, but I just I just want to say we make fun of the Apple Circle a lot, right? Yeah. We think their YouTube channel is goofy. Yeah. Um but I I, I find it curious that you are like Apple Circle on TikTok. Like you're a different person on TikTok than you are on the podcast or on YouTube videos. Disagree. Okay. But continue. Like, okay, we're going to play a TikTok that has been tweeted since, but is just, um, okay, here we go. I'm going to play it. We just got our first look at iOS 18, and it looks super different. For the first time since 2013, Apple's giving us some new icons as well as a fresh coat of paint across your entire iPhone. Unlike iOS 7, where Apple pretty much got rid of all the detail in everything everywhere, iOS 18 is going to build off of Apple's Vision OS operating system that features things like depth and shadows to make things feel more tactile and real, a ton of blur on things like pop-ups, and even Siri is not only going to look visually better, uh, it's, it's actually going to get a lot better because of AI and iOS 18. Basically, every element that we know right now is going to look a lot different than it does currently, and this is the fresh coat of paint that the iPhone needs. Because at this point, we've been rocking the same Okay, that's kind of it. Like, yeah. the, the TikTok goes on with other changes, but like... Sure. You really did just go into that TikTok like it's, like it's a fact. And that is odd for you, I feel like. I feel I, I feel like the, I don't know if it's just TikTok energy or the lack of time you have to explain yourself, 
but it's very apple circle-y. And I would like you to I would like to put you on the stand to testify for yourself. Please. Court is in session. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Sir, what do you have to say no for yourself? Um I mean, I see what you're saying, but yeah, I just disagree. I think what the Apple Serial does is lie, uh, and I'm not lying because my information is from a report. But the, so okay, but the report is literally on Mac Rumors, and the first word of the title of the article is sketchy. It says sketchy. No, rumor. that's Ma- that's Mac Rumors reporting on the original article. But that's the one you shared as your source. That, on Twitter, that was just your... the first link on Google. If you Google, okay. it's from the Verifier. Okay. They're an Israeli website, and a lot of people because they don't know context and just accuse people of things. I have worked with the Verifier before. I know some about them. I've had conversations. I, I collabed with them on leaks in the past. I've had okay. nobody knew this. So this guy is just saying stuff. I, have, I will maintain what I've always said. I take this job very seriously. I only report on things that I think are relevant or important. And I make TikToks based on my mission, which is to get the most people excited about technology as possible. No, but, that does but not in include that TikTok, nine. But in that TikTok, you say nothing about like, oh, by the way, this might not be true. You are just saying it to a lot of people as if it is actually the truth. And you don't mention the verifier. You don't mention where it comes from. It's just coming from you. You are saying this. So like context doesn't matter in this one minute TikTok because it's you saying it as if it's a fact. Yeah, I believe that it's going to look like Vision OS and happen. I believe that rumor. I could be wrong. But you, but, but you're, but you're not saying I believe. You're just saying it is going to be this. Yeah, I think it will be. I might be wrong. But do you see the issue? If it's not, you said it is. You didn't say I think. You said it is. Yeah, I said it's going to be a redesign, the biggest since iOS seven. But you're saying it's it is going to look, going like, look Vision like Vision OS. OS. It's going to be the tactile, the t- more tactile with the depth and like. But what if it's not? Then I was wrong and I got tricked. But, like, you're not saying how you got tricked. There's no context to how you got tricked. Like, on the podcast, like, okay, you can say it's I'm being a bit verifier. facetious. I, I see what you're saying. Okay, um, good. <laughs> and that, yeah, sometimes I won't include the source in them. I go back and forth. Uh, a lot of it's just how content and time works. So, like, a lot of the, like, smaller details, you kind of have to cut out for things mm. to do well. Which, so it's like a, more of a you, creative choice. Yeah, but say what you will about it ethically. Like, I definitely question that all the time. Like, in my videos, I sometimes want to include sources because I'm thinking about watch time. And I ultimately wrestle with that quite a bit. But I don't like when people say that I'm lying because I'm not. And there's a very big difference between what I do and what the Apple Circle does. The Apple Circle will literally say one video a month that the iPhone is dying. Yeah. And I think there's a difference between using that as a hook and just like getting things wrong and misleading people because there is wide reporting from credible sources that iOS 18 is going to have a redesign. What that redesign is going to look like, the best information we have as of right now. Does it, it German like say it's, gonna it's not going to be Vision OS? Yeah. German also said that the Apple Watch was going to 100% have a micro LED display. And Mark Gurman's rating as a person is significantly decreasing in my own mind because of the risks and things he's been saying, which we can talk about that in a little bit because I do want to talk about Oh, that sounds like drama. a topic I'm going to love. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, like I I guess I thought about like arguing. I mean, I'll show the, the Twitter thread because I think it's probably relevant. Um, let me find it. Yeah, this person basically just like – said, crazy how bro is straight up lying. None of this has been confirmed. I also don't think I said the word confirmed in this TikTok. Like I didn't say iOS 18 redesign confirmed. But Sam, it's like you're saying it is. That is, that's, you didn't use the word Yeah, I'm saying this is what it's going to look like. Yeah. But I'm not lying. See, see, there's, you could have attacked me in a way and be like, don't you see how this is misleading? And I'd be like, yeah, fair. Mm-hmm. I see is this, that a, is this a person that follows you or is it just some fucking random person that's on TikTok uh, I don't know who this person is but I'm sure they're great I'm sure they they said they're a dev we love devs um, but like it's really bad too because people are believing this um, you know people are mentioning circular I, I really don't want circular icons round absolutely not round keyboard keys round like you can't, that's the thing about TikTok. You can't explain 
in an eight minute video every detail about something in the but same that, way. I, I feel like that's your job though, is to figure out how to translate that. Because these people don't have the context you do. You are there for, you're, they're hearing this from you first, and you're saying it is going to be this. And now that comment about round icons had 10,000 likes, just the comment. Yeah. Like the, these people probably to this day think that that's what's, and not saying it isn't, but like they don't have context of the maybe. It For them, you just said it as a fact. And sure. I think so, that's the. So I guess I could do a better job of throwing in like a maybe at the end of the video of like, and well, it is yeah, just a rumor, and it's so like, who knows? You're becoming the guy. Sure, that's fair. I'll, I'll accept that. And if you're their source and they're not getting the full picture from you and that's just, that's all the information they have to work on or work with is like, there's got to be a better, more clever way of sort of not giving yourself an out but like communicating that this isn't confirmed this is but see that uh, <laughs> i'm happy to like work on things when i hear feedback but like when somebody's like bro's just lying like yeah i get defensive and i get annoyed because it's like yeah. that you can't have you're not gonna have a conversation and be better which is like why i was like hey maybe i'll try maybe this person's like wanting to have a discussion so i had replied i was like hey link to the rumor that this information is from and I literally Googled it. I read the word sketchy and I was like, I wonder if this person would like pick on that or if they would like read the actual article and no, they're just going to pick. Okay. So that, so that's when I was like, it's not worth having a conversation with this person because they clearly only care. Like, okay. So I was just like, Hey, here's where the information's from. Cause I thought they uh -huh. were saying that I was lying about a redesign coming. Um, oh, I'm, like, I no, I'm, no. I'm, I'm not, I'm not lying. Uh, there's information about this. And then they were like, so now you're saying it's a rumor, but in the video, it was our first look at iOS 18. Uh, yeah, there's like, I think there's a difference between catching someone's attention. Uh, to be clear, I, I see where I could have done better. Caught here. in a pickle. Yeah, like I see where I caught it better, but I guess I, I also perceive like the perceived harms to not be that great. Because uh, I didn't... <sighs> yeah, I see what you're saying. I just, I think... It's I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking side. matter. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I guess this that's what I'm life saying. Or death like, information. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying ultimately is like, this is my vision of I want, and I really want to see this style on iOS, so I want to present it this way. Um, and then when the thing comes out, I'm going to present it what Apple releases. But, but like, even a simple, even like a simple phrase like "we're hearing this is" instead of "this is" goes a yeah. long way into like not not giving yourself an out just in case, but just like dropping hints even subtly that this isn't like it's not coming directly from you you don't you're just you're just translating the information or do you know that do you know it's not coming directly from me Is i'm it? just joking it wasn't <laughs> okay from me, but, yeah all this um, uh, this whole argument goes away if you know <clears throat> no i don't know um and yeah german says it's not going to be vision os but is going to be a redesign <laughs> and the verifier has a mixed track record, to be clear. Like, they've been really right about some things. They've been what are really they, What wrong are they on Apple things. Track? I think they're around 60%. Or maybe I it's remember 40%. you working with them, actually. Yeah, it's not the best track record, to be clear. However, again, you can't say all of this in 60 seconds, but I'm like, Vision OS is going to be the platform one day. Apple wants to make it more comfortable. So they're going to try to like get people used to that design styling. You know, these are just thoughts in my head that I think this is an inherent problem problem with short form video and I can and will do better with it. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to explain where my head was at when making this. And I do take offense when people say that I'm lying because I'm not lying. The information that I'm sharing, I'm misleading. Sure. That would be, Hey, it's misleading. When you say this, that's a fair thing to say. I can understand how watching that piece of content, you'd be like, that's misleading. And I need to be better at that. That's fair. Yeah. But when it's like, bro's just lying. I mean, I he's doing the same thing you're doing. <clears throat> Explain. Like, that's just his opinion, that you're lying. Oh, yeah, I know. And he's just saying that. And it's just your opinion that this is going to be iOS 18. And he that's what you did. So it's just like... Yeah, but I'm not calling out a specific person or attacking them for what they yeah, did. Yeah, fair. Like, you could send me a D... I guess just like... But without knowing you, like... If this was the yeah. Apple Circle, we would say they're lying. 
And I'm sure if we sat down with Robert, he he would be like, well, actually, it's because of this. And like he, he he he's giving his own he's helping himself sleep better at night. There are his own excuses, just like you have your own excuses. And I don't think like do I think someone should just go, oh, you're lying. No. But also it's like it's it's part of the territory, I feel like. for you. I, I think that there's a difference, though, brother. Hit because. Me, brother. <laughs> I mean, like I can go to FPT thumbnails. Like, I, I, okay, oh, here's yeah. a great here's a great example of like I think the same thing that I do currently. I am not comparing you to the Apple Circle. There is no actual reporting that the Apple Ring will ever be a product. The most information that we have is that Apple has explored the idea of a ring, which is exactly what I say in the video. <clears throat> No, you say it's going to be Apple's next big, small surprise, and you make it look like it's really coming. In the, vi in the video, I literally say I, we, ex we explore patents from 2020, <laughs> and I say patents don't always come to fruition. Yeah. I'm just saying you can they see maybe may if they don't watch to yeah, that yeah, part yeah. in the video, maybe if they – I'm yeah. saying I, do, I think Fair what you're enough. doing is fine because it gets people yeah. to click, and you're making the best video you can make for people to watch. Mm -hmm. Can I do – to be clear, one – I will do a better job of making things clear. So learning there. Number two, <laughs> the thumbs up. I do take offense when people say I'm either lying or I am the Apple Circle because if we look at what the Apple Circle does, oh boy, this, this is going to be really fun. Uh, this is a YouTube channel that does lie. Oh, dude, for, I, for I almost example, tweeted a screenshot of this video <coughs> and I decided against it. I just for example, iPhone 16 Vision Apple Wild 2024 plan revealed. So like, would you like to describe the thumbnail for there, our audio listeners? Yes, it's a square iPhone. I guess that's all there is. To, it's a square iPhone that says it's going to be thirteen hundred dollars, and it releases this fall called iPhone Vision. Like this doesn't even compute. Like they are just saying nonsensical things. But that's why I get, I take offense when you say you're doing the same thing as the Apple Circle because I am not making a video about products or saying things that don't exist at all. There is always evidence at the core. And sure, I amplify or like pick out certain parts that I want to make louder than others. Mm -hmm. That's how content works. Like I also know, and like to be clear, the person that was like beefing with me on Twitter, I, I'm sure you're great. Like I don't- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no hate to them. But I think it's also different. Like they would probably know how to make a better app than I would. And yeah. <laughs> there's different rules and tricks you can do in an app to make good or bad decisions. Like, I, I'm kind of both sizing this, which is kind of invalidating them, so I should stop that. I can do better in certain areas. I just, like, I don't know. Maybe it's just like this week, I've just noticed humans like suck at confrontation and people can okay. be better. Like, dude, I'm sitting on my birthday eating pizza and somebody had laid their jacket down on a bench in this like lunchroom style seating, like a school table. So it's taking up like half of an entire bench. I don't see them anywhere around. So I think somebody maybe left it there. So I had sat and I had accidentally sat on it. Okay. The lady walks up to me. Let me just say, what would you do if you came back to the table and someone was sitting on your thing, eating dinner with their friends? Uh, what? Like if you saw somebody, let's say you took off your hoodie. Yeah. And somebody was sitting on the very edge of it talking to their friends mid conversation. What, like, oh, okay. what would you say to, to obtain that piece of your property back? Uh, I would probably be too polite. I would probably be like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean, like, let me get this. This is mine. I didn't mean to have it in the way. Sure, that's one approach. You could yeah. take the very, like, oh, let me be respectful. You could take the more serious approach, like, excuse me, do you mind if I grab my jacket? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Or, excuse me, that's my jacket right there. Can I have, yeah. This woman walks up to me and she goes, hey, you're sitting on like my jacket thing. Oh, God. So I go, oh, that's my apologies. I didn't mean to do that. Here you go. Yeah. And then she turns around to her friends and she was like, oh, he was so nice. That was the New Yorker in me coming out. But I'm like that. So you knew you were being a dick and you were being a dick anyway. Uh -huh. And that's my problem with people and communication. I don't know why it's so f hard to be say things like rat normally. Like, yeah. excuse me, sir, you're sitting on my jacket. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But the, you're sitting on my jacket thing. 
Oh, so you own the table in this public restaurant? Like, dude, it (laughs) took, oh, I didn't even tell you about how my birthday went. You know, I got towed on my birthday. You did? Dude. Dude, Also, have you received a package from me yet? (laughs) I have not checked. It might have come, uh, but I will have to check. Because I don't, you don't think I forgot your birthday, did you? Oh, no, I told you happy birthday at midnight. No, yeah, you told me. I knew you didn't forget my birthday, but I never expect like a gift or anything. What? Um, We have, we have a yearly tradition. I know, but I don't expect that. I'm not going to be like, we're <laughs> best gift? buds for life. You better expect it. If <laughs> you can expect, expect a birthday gift expect, from your best expect, bud, what can you expect these days? I don't expect anything from anyone, genuinely. Um, and I'm very blessed for what I have and the opportunities that I'm given. And that people, I am very blessed that people even listen to me in the first place with all my lying that I do. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, yeah. like, I feel like since COVID, nobody wants to have a conversation and they just want to yell. I think people don't know how to human anymore. Which I get because it's super easy to yell. That guy on Twitter that was talking to me, I wanted to say, shut up, fuck you. <laughs> but that's not productive. That's not going to get anywhere. So I tried to start a narrative. <laughs> you want to hear Lincoln. You want to hear a lie? Here's a lie. I think you're handsome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, got him back. You know, something like that. Or like, <laughs> show your face, coward. Like, you know, yeah. I could. that's not going to get anywhere. Yeah, we're um, so I just wish, and again, maybe it's because I'm growing up, and I definitely have not always had this. Although I do feel like I was always willing to have a conversation, but even the woman at the place, or when the tow truck driver is coming out with my car half lifted because a taco truck blocked the no parking sign that was literally impossible to see. And I will be fighting the city of Los Angeles on, by the way, oh boy. for my $279 tow and $163 ticket. I will be fighting you on that, you motherfuckers. Oh, God. Oh, um, God. When I go out to the tow guy, like, this is another situation. I'm eating. On your birthday. It, on my birthday doesn't matter. I'm a human. I mean, it does matter. I see my car getting towed. I run out. I see him actively trying to drag my expensive vehicle onto a tow truck. And I go, yo, yo, what's going on, man? And he looks at me like I'm insane. He like stops. He goes, what? I'm like, I'm I'm sorry. Am I towing my car or are you towing my car? Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like one of us maybe would be allowed to be a bit surprised if we run out of a restaurant to see our property being moved. Does he know that it's your car yet? Or does he just think you're a random person? Yeah, I think I said, yo, what are you doing? That's my car. Oh, and then he was okay. like, we're towing you, man. You can't park here after four. To now, be fair, fa- he's, just, he's just doing his job. He got orders. Yeah, from but he wasn't doing a good job. <laughs> and that's the difference. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I was just like trying to talk to bro, and then he's like, basically, it's like nothing I can do. Sorry, yeah. There's yeah. always something you can do. Just, I just want that to be clear. Anyone can do anything that they want ever. You have free will. You might not want to. There might be a rule or your boss or something, but you can always do something if you want. And like, so then I go to talk to the traffic person, and I'm like, hey man, there was a truck parked here. It was literally impossible to see the sign. And of course, I'm with Vadim from Max Tech and Max okay. and um, Ben, their, their editor. Their editor. So we're having yeah. lunch together. Very fun. Um, Great guys. And he, they start yelling, it's his birthday. Come on, bro. Now, I was not going to bring up my birthday at all because I think that's dumb. Okay, that's not an excuse. Okay. I, and it's just another day, right? I, I appreciate when people make me feel special, but like, I'm never going to be like, it's my birthday. You know, like that's, that's so silly to me. So I was just like trying to talk to people and I'm like, so here's the, here's the thing that pissed me off. He hadn't even loaded up my car. And he's like, just to let your car go, it will be $270. To Dog, like not tow it? that should be illegal. Yeah, to not tow it, you got to pay. So, wait, what? You got to pay the it's fine? Called a, you got to pay them it, to let go? Yeah, it, so it's called a drop fee. He goes, I can <sighs> only let you, because... Your vehicle is my property now because you broke city law. It is no longer your property. You have to pay me $270 or I can tow it to the yard for you in which it will go up to three to $500. Oh, my God. And I was talking to Luke about this because Luke was with me for my birthday. And I was like, dude, I am so lucky that like I have a job where I have savings and I'm 
okay financially. But if a normal person making 50 grand a year on their birthday where they maybe went to an expensive lunch Mm -hmm. and then had to pay a $170 ticket and potentially four to $500, you're looking at $500 you have to come up with to get your car back. Yeah. That's, that could be all someone has that month for food. And it just made me realize like, okay, again, to be clear, I know I was in the wrong. I wouldn't have parked there had I seen the sign. Like just so everybody knows, I don't like park wherever because I'm a dick. I would have moved, but it's like that context that people are just very black and white that I hate. Um, And I'm very consistent with that. Like I hate when it's just like, that's just how it is. So like I asked the guys like, hey, can I just like give you 150 bucks like to let me go? Like, what's the deal, man? Like I, I, we've got stuff. And he was like, nah. And then when he lets my car down, first of all, he leans on my car to get up. And let's just say he had the build of somebody who tows trucks. Okay. My headlight, I hear a crack when he leans on it. He doesn't even acknowledge that it happened. I'm like, dog, if I was, if I'm a tow truck driver, I am going to be the most fragile with people's property that I can be. Like, I just don't understand the like, even if someone does something wrong without any questions, it's just like, I'm going to treat this like a piece of shit. Yeah. Like that's insane to behave in. That is a choice you have as a worker that you can choose to be a good worker or a bad worker. And I mm-hmm. know he probably has a family and I know he was just trying to feed his family. And that's why I didn't pop off. It took every year of 26 in me to not go off. It okay. did. Yeah. Cause I knew that he was just doing his job. But at the end, he hit me with a zinger when I'm getting in my car, he goes, Hey, sorry, man. I know it's like your birthday and stuff, but it's LA. You never know what's going to happen. Why and I'm like, even? no, oh, no, I do know what's going to happen. <laughs> you didn't have to tow my car. Like, so, like, oh, it's out of my control. I'm so towing you had, it. No. So you paid the drop fee. Yeah, I had to pay like the 300 full... something. Yeah. 200, and, 200, and 200 you still want to, you have to pay the fine? I have to pay. Oh, I'm, I'm fighting the fine and I'm getting that refund from the tax company as well. Because that is not right that a different vehicle was blocking the parking sign to where you could not see it. Mm-hmm. And the meter was broken on top of that. Oh, so perfect. I tried to pay for the meter. Also, if you would have paid on the meter in their Los Angeles city property, it wouldn't have been broken. I would have seen that it would only let you pay till four. So I would have set a timer or reminder. So there's yeah. multiple failures on the part of the Didn't city. Didn't we have a similar thing when we were in LA visiting where yeah, we, no, we no were going to do a photo shoot? We were going to do a photo shoot. We parked a car that, that was rented and the meter wasn't working. And we're like, oh, I guess we'll find out if we get towed. Maybe I can't remember, but it's just the fact that like I was explaining like, Hey, I get it. You're just trying to do it. But like, there literally is no, no way to see this. And they're just like 400 bucks. Have a good day. Also the fact that that, it just breaks my heart to know that like, if that wouldn't have been me parked there, that somebody would like actually not have like, that's just insane. There's a difference between like giving someone a penalty for doing something wrong. And like, and that's, that could be bankrupting someone. Mm. That's in like a hundred something dollars. Okay. I get it. $500 is insane. That's just, that's (sighs) multiple days of work for humans. That's, uh, and it's, uh, so it was just that. And then I just, I just want people to be able to have a conversation. Like even the tow truck guy was just like, just so, I know it's your job. And he's and probably used again, to dealing with people who are not you. I know, but I didn't yell. I didn't raise my voice. I mm. asked, I was asking stern questions. I was being assertive, but I would, I was not disrespectful in any way. I did not curse at all, which is big. And it's just like, <laughs> even when I'm like being nice and respectful and just trying to have a conversation, it doesn't. Again, it would have been different. And I, I know when they pulled up there, they're like, he's parked in front of the sign. He's blocking traffic. Get, get this asshole out of here. He thinks he's better. But it's like, hey, there's context. Mm-hmm. And sometimes context matters. Yeah. And that's my whining session for this episode of Genius Bar. What a packed episode. 
Just an emotional roller coaster, really. Yeah, and it's just like uh, now I have to like engage with the city and like do this whole thing, and like of course I'm gonna do it because I'm petty as hell, and like I'm gonna. Oh I'll yeah, show, oh yeah, I'll, you're I'll, gonna I'll show do up it. to that court hearing. Yeah, yeah. there's no. I, I mean, I'm waiting they for the next small with the claim wrong guy. Suit. Yeah. Oh, the towing company. <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> for the next couple of months. Um, just because it's I don't know. Being a human's really hard, and I just Ain't feel it. like humans. You know, maybe the maybe people that say I'm lying, maybe they're going through something, and I should maybe. be more empathetic that they're just looking for. Maybe they just wanted a good piece of content, and I didn't deliver it. Maybe I need to be better so that they experience more joy in yeah. their lives. Yep. Now I'm just pissed thinking about the. I'm not even gonna lie. I got pissed thinking about the toy truck situation again. Sounds like it. Do you want to go get them? Yeah. Interview him on the show. Oh my god, that would be awesome. Do you know whose car you just towed? No, that's not that's Sam not Cole. Fifty percent of Genius Bar. Have you heard I just, of it? I just feel like. <laughs> I just feel like this city's expensive, man. <laughs> is this you discovering it? Yeah, this is me discovering it. Not that. only expensive just just to be there, but expensive and weird ass penalties. Yeah. Th- that they try to put on you. Yeah. But hey, anyway, you can't so the world. iPhone 16 Vision. Yeah, this is uh you know, but again, you know, you kind of hurt my feelings when you said it's the same thing. I feel like Okay, I, I didn't you, mean re- to hurt you, your feelings. But dog. but do you really think that I'm doing the same I thing? I didn't as mean this? to I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. It must have caught you on a bad day. I was just, No, no, but tell me, do you, I want you to be honest. Do you think I do the same thing as no, the Apple store? Because no, if I do, no, I need no, to change no, it. No, no. I just think I just feel like leaving out context for the is sake bad. of good content is what they do. You did that to a less degree, so you're not full you're not full Apple Circle. That was just that was just my gotcha to upset you, but That's it was fair. the wrong day to upset you. I see no, that. it's not. It's always this is like I'm trying every to day, your attitude. Every day is the right day to upset me. Okay. I think is what I've learned in life. Um, no, I just uh, That's, I just feel like you're not like that on YouTube. I think you're more like the Apple Circle on YouTube than I am. Huh? What? Dude, have you seen some of your old titles and thumbnails? You've gotten better. Okay, but... yeah, yeah. Like I'm actively trying to be not that, but like yeah, yeah. I'm, just I'm talking saying. about I'm talking about your actual video. Like in at no point in your video did you disclose that this wasn't it, or po- that there's a possibility it, that, that there's that's a chance not it. that it's just a rumor. Yeah, at yeah. no point. And like the I whole said, experience, I saw short. I'm I talking short the whole there. experience was just very not Sam E. <laughs> Yeah, I think I fell short there. I think that's fair. Also, how old is that TikTok? Because I don't, I don't know how long I had to scroll to find uh, it. A month or two, probably. Hmm. It did really well. Um, it was a great TikTok. I, really I bet it did. It. it was really fun. But, I but think does it, it well do as well if you disclose right up front, this is just a rumor? I don't think it does. I think if you say it right away, probably not. Because that would be the same thing of like anything if you just said, well, allegedly <laughs> this. Right away, mm. it's like you could just mention that later. I think there's a way to, to to combine what I do and what I think your vision of what I should do and what I probably should. It's do. It's not a vision of what I think you should do. It's just how you usually do things. This went against that. Yeah. I mean, you could yeah, you can make the same argument about my iPhone 16 Pro video, where I'm just kind of like, this is what it's going to look like. Mm. I mean, no, because those are all real. Like, those are all, like, real prototypes. We don't have anyone definitively saying it's going to be like Vision OS. I know, but in the video, I say this is the final design when 100% we don't know it's the final design. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I think I've shifted my content in general, so I think it is Okay, consistent. I think my and argument there— short in some ways, and I'm going to be better. I think my argument there with you saying this is the final design is way more justified with your experience. Like that is where someone like you can come in and be like, with my history yeah. of rumors, I'm confident saying that this is the final design. I don't think there's anything that exists where someone of your level of respect can go on and be like, this is, it's going to be Vision OS. Yeah, we don't know for sure. 
Like, regardless of you, even with your experience level, I don't think you're able to say that. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Anyway, I just thought that, that was interesting, uh, especially with mm-hmm. the guy on Twitter being like, well, he said you were lying. That's separate, though. Is there any other other Sam Cole hating stuff? Because you mentioned this week has been a Sam Cole hate corner. Well, that's just every week. There's usually a little something special oh, okay. in store, but that was that was this week. I think it was a good episode. I like that one. But you'll notice, what if I told you? What if you told me? That what you have just said, what this criticism was, was already in the works after seeing feedback. Because yesterday mean? you can hear what I said. Now, the first version of this TikTok... And the one that I know would do better was say goodbye to your iPhone. It's about to become an Android. Here are the five things about to change based on the U.S. government. Mm, yeah, that's, yep. yep. But I, I changed say it that. to say proposal. Much Yeah, better. I mean, we all do it. There's just a level where we let up a little bit and we're like, we disclose a bit. And when there's no disclosure at all, that's when it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I think adding it to the end of the video would be fair because I don't think it would. Uh, with TikTok, you have 1.8 seconds to capture someone's attention, and yeah, I mean, I think there's a reason that my TikToks in general do well. I think I've done a pretty good job at that, and I think I think it's important, like you said, to mention you know other stuff. Anyway, heard feedback received and. Anyone can always reach out and tell me how that they feel. But I would appreciate Don't call him a liar probably, and don't tow his fucking car. I'd probably just feel more receptive if it started with like a hey man. You know Hey man. Hey man. I just think that's, Why you lie? <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. I think that'd be better. Hey man. Yeah. Okay, so please file your criticisms to at iUpdate on Twitter. Um and make sure to start with hey man. Yeah. Those are the only requirements. Uh, are we? Hey, man, are we done with the show? Why oh, do you got somewhere to be? No, I just don't know if we have anything else to cover. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this, this is was a packed such a episode. Packed this episode, episode yeah. Thank, thank you to everybody for listening for me. Um, I mean, I still no iPad. With me. Yes. Are we getting? I actually, I had to reshoot a video. I had to reshoot a video because I thought it was going to be Tuesday, March twenty sixth, like the rumors said, and then Mark Gurman said no. Because it's going to be saying. Monday, the 25th. Well, I just reshot an entire video today where I changed literally the entire video because of the date. So, And German was like, it's... he tweeted, being facetious, saying, <laughs> yeah, this. you're right, it's my fault, there's no iPads or something. Taking things to an extreme level when he knows damn well it's his fault that everyone's expecting iPads. Y'all on Twitter are correct. It is undeniably my fault that Apple hasn't released new iPads in over a year. (laughs) That's, you're really, you're really fucking playing a funny game there, sir. See, he's doing what I do. Rather than accepting the criticism and owning it. Actually, no, I'm pretty good at it. It is his fault that that. everyone's expecting iPads every week this month. It is not his fault that they haven't been, like, he's taking something so ridiculous. Yeah. And painting his actual mistake with the same brush and that's goofy yeah Mark Garment he's being very questionable lately well he got he got the micro OLED displays wrong you see this he got this wrong too yeah he says that his reporting has been consistent it absolutely has not been consistent Um, let me find the article here we go Apple drops plan to develop micro LED displays this is like a moot I don't even care about this at all really going to be honest, but I find it interesting that a couple weeks ago uh, in February, I believe Ross Young or somebody else, yeah, another Apple supplier said that there was like a micro LED cancellation. Yeah, Ross has been waiting to be vindicated. Yeah, Ross Young was like, yo, 100%, yeah, I've heard it's canceled too. Which, by the way, yeah, speaking of Ross Young, I don't, I don't want to make any sort of official announcements, but I'm going to be speaking at uh, at an event for him. I don't Bro, I don't know if the so date cool. or any, I think they're going to announce it, but the date and location is forthcoming. Do you get paid? Uh, I don't think so. I feel like you should. You should ask him. My expenses are paid, but 
That sounds really cool. Congrats, bro. What is it about? Do you know what you're speaking about? Yeah, Vision Pro. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Hell yeah. At least that's what he asked me to speak about, so. Nice. You can speak about this too. Um, That's really cool. But yeah, basically like Mark Gurman was like, nope, everybody's saying this is wrong. And he like tripled down on it. And then. Oh boy. uh, As you can see here, at the very bottom, it says Gurman said. And a now deleted tweet. What does that link go to? They screenshotted it. I doubt it was canceled. Whew. He do a little deletey. Hey, some of See, us when we get stuff wrong don't delete stuff. Some of us are, are some of our top performing videos are completely inaccurate leaks that we haven't deleted. I'm just saying, Mark. You got to yeah, stand I, on business. You got to stand, stand on business. I think you should stand on business. Yeah. I think he should stand on business. But yeah, I just found it weird that he like he kept saying, he was like, nope, everybody's wrong. And then it's like, oh, you're wrong. Yeah. So why triple down? I guess he just had different info or whatever. It's an yeah, ego. That, Mark Garman has an ego issue. I thought that was interesting. How old is Mark? Ro- Ross Young, my goat. I don't know. He's either like 23 or 52. <laughs> Anywhere in between. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's just he's agely ambiguous. Even in person, I was like, I don't know if you're like my age. I don't know. Maybe he's 10. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, that was fun. Um, Okay. I think that's it for Apple News. Vox Vox posted an article. Bloomberg just hired a 22-year-old Apple scoop machine. That was June 1st, 2016. The man is not 22 years old anymore. Uh, I was going to say maybe he's younger because, like, I had an ego problem, too, and eventually, oh, so like, you, you grow out of it. But if he's the same age, he should have grown out of it by now. He's 30 years old. Happy 30th birthday. He's the same age as you. Yeah. <laughs> he I is. love you, Mark. Come on, Genius Bar, Mark. Yeah, do that. Okay, I guess we'll get new iPads. Never. Um, <laughs> yeah, very, very <laughs> love it. episode. Love that Very for fun. Us. Um, and episode I guess- will be posted on time this week. That'll be great. Yeah. Okay. Our energy. I mean, maybe. Dying. Thank you. Something. Thank you guys for listening. What's dying? Our energy. Okay. We're yeah, both we'll like see looking ya. down. We're not even looking at the camera anymore. Yeah. We okay. Go. We'll see you guys next week. Oh my God! So much energy. Wow. Definitely didn't just this do a two-hour show. This has been the best episode ever. Woo! Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Try not to. Don't let your cars get towed. Tell. Say no to tow trucks. Say no to to truck. Say no Only to truck. Only cyber truck. If they Dude, say. I really want a cyber truck. Oh no! If they say give us money to dr- to not tow your truck, you say sock my hiney. You know what I say? What do you say? I don't know. I'm I'm speechless after this week, to be honest. Okay. Wow. Okay. Good. Yeah, That's what. For once. So we finally got Sam Cole to be speechless. Just call him a liar with no hey man. I bet if the tow truck driver was like. Hey, hey man. man, this is just, you know, how co- you would have been way better about it. She's like, it's the energy, man. Yeah. Hey, man. Well, hey, man, uh, we'll see you next week. Hey, man, see you next week.